I want to show you how these little nozzles a little bit of green garden hose, a plentiful supply of rainwater and a decent automatic pump can revolutionize the watering systems in your garden, saving time, money and ultimately water, which is the most precious commodity we have. Guys, welcome back to the channel. I am the military gardener and I'm on the permanent hunt for gardening hacks that are going to save me time, that are going to save me money, that's going to save me water and that's going to give me more time back to develop the garden rather than maintaining it. Today, it's a watering system hack. I've been on the hunt for ages and ages for the best way to water the garden. It's 25, 26 degrees here in Somerset and it is gonna be for the next two or three weeks. We need loads of water and if I don't do it right, that's gonna take me loads and loads of time. And eventually, as you can see, a big site like this, something like four acres, all I'll be doing is bloody well watering and that's not what I wanna do. So stay tuned to find out how I get around it and save a whole ton of time and a whole ton of water. I'm just going to walk you slowly down the vegetable patch. You can see it's effectively split into four main beds, but I like to think of it as two zones. One on this side, uh, which is the uphill zone, and one on this side, which is the downhill zone, both roughly the same sort of size. Now, what I've done is I've put in, I like to think like a ring main, if you like, of garden hose. All the way along, you can see it going down the bed there. All the way along the front. I won't take it all the way down there, but then it, all, it turns the corner around the back and goes all the way down the back of the bed. The same again on that side. And all I've done is repeat exactly the same on the downhill section, ring main and pipe all the way around the outside. And then I have inserted these nozzles, which I think are the best thing since bloody sliced bread, all the way along as I need them, depending on what it is that I've got planted. And then to a manifold, if you like, into this piece here, which allows me to zone control um, the watering system, uh, which is fed from a Bosch uh, 18 volt pump using, in this case, a two and a half amp hour battery. Really like this, this system. I've got a separate video on my uh, YouTube channel about how good this is and I put it through its absolute paces but as you can see simple on off function and a really useful 5, 10, 15 minute timer. Now laying the pipes relatively straightforward you can see I'm just doing it there I've sped it up for you um, and to secure it in I really just like to sort of drive in some screws at about 45 degree angles all the way along around and you can just rest that pipe on there really and it means it's very easy to remove it or put it back on uh, as you need to. All right, now at this point when you reach the end, clearly you want to cap it off with something. I like to do it with uh, you know, a stop valve or a connector, I should say stop connector and a valve, which means if I want to add on to this at a later date, then I can quite easily. So I'm going to do that. But if you don't want to do that, and a simple bending it over and a cable tie or even electrician's tape or something like that is a, is a cheaper alternative. Yeah, so once you've hung your piece of hose on the screws like that, which is really quite straightforward, you want to be able to pull it taut. What you don't want is like little bends like this. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much, but it doesn't look that tidy and it might uh, offset some of the jets. So pop another screw in nice and close to one of the other ones you've got, but not so close that it pinches and causes the water restriction. Just push that home like that. And then you've got a little bit of free play with that hose, but you have to just put it through in order to do it. You'll see now if I pull that through, it pinches it quite nicely and pulls the hose tight. Well, here's one I did earlier on the top bed. You can see nice straight pipe, nice long line of jets. They're already in, but what I'm gonna do now is just show you how to insert one of those jets, which couldn't be any easier. The same screws that you've been using to you know, support the pipe. Each of these, I think they're about 60 mil, something like that, but not too wide. Uh, you can use them to, with your screw gun or with a screwdriver, gently drive it in, pierce the top bit of the hose. Once you've done that, turn it into reverse. Be careful not to pierce the back, obviously. And then just with a little bit of pressure, continue just rotate that screw in that hole and it provides you can see it there just a nice 
clean hole where you can take your jet. As you can see the back of it right there, like many other watering appliances, you gotta give it a good, nice hard push in there. Bob's your uncle, it's in. It's got a little screw function there. I'm gonna screw it all the way off to the left so it's not doing anything and I can do that all at the end. Well, let's put some more in. So hey guys, that's it, I think I'm complete. Uh, so now it's for the exciting bit, which is to test it, to see if it works, see if there's any leaks, no doubt there will be. It's about simplification, right, and saving time. So we've got this valve that I've already mentioned, they're both off at the minute, and this effectively allows me to zone the vegetable patch. Let's try the bottom section first, which I think is that one. So valve on, button on, Simple as that. You can see it. Not there yet. <laughs> I wonder why the pressure wasn't that good. And it might be because of that. I didn't cap it off. What a Right, let's try again, shall we? Valve on. Button on. Let's have a look. Now we're talking, troopers. Now we are talking. Yeah, a little bit of leak there, but I tolerate that. It's fine. Look at that one. That one there is coming right at me. I don't want to catch it on the camera. Yes. Sort that out. Put that down. Let's get in the whole vegetable box. It's super. Hey, okay, look, I'm really, really happy with that so far. Let's have a look at the other section. Now you see here, because I've got these uh, nets, what I'm doing with these jets is aiming them up as high as possible. And then what they do is they get to the top of the net and effectively start to rain down. And I've got one on the other side that's doing the same thing. It works quite nicely. Yeah, but... yeah really happy. So we'll do some adjusting on the nozzles, but that's the bottom section, pretty tidy. Now. To change the zones, really, I could just off and on. Don't do anything to the pump, let that carry on. And then you should be able to see next to me all the water kicking off. In fact, the chickens are <laughs> getting a damn soaking. That's what they deserve, the little buggers. Going around scratching in my vegetable back. But yeah, let's have a look at that. I mean, they're working an absolute treat. All right, guys, so now I've got it all set up and working. I just want to show you a couple of the little features and why I think this is the best watering system you can do for complicated flower beds or vegetable gardens and things like that. Uh, first of all, it, you know, it's just on a hose. So if you want to change the location of the nozzles, which you can do very, very easily, you can pretty much shut these things down. I can't do it with one hand now or, or reduce them to almost minimum flow. And if you wanted, then you can put one next to it or in between the two nozzles, aiming further up or aiming down or have it as a drip or something like that. I should be able to show you that if you want, you can direct these things to a jet. You know, I don't know if you can see how far that's going, but it's, well, it's, it's going way over the back of the bed into the orchard and then there we go, look, you can rain it right down to a fine mist. So it's just getting the first yard or so, but in a lovely mist, you know, I've got mine set in the middle somewhere like that, but excellent, excellent system. It takes very little pressure. I've got maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 nozzles on this one zone, and you can see the pressure, they're working brilliantly. I could add maybe 10 or 15 more easily. Yeah, so that's it, guys. It's about keeping things simple here at Torside and trying to save 
uh, money, water, anything, but ultimately time, right? So I can manage other parts of the garden. I'm not bogged down in maintenance. Uh, I can start to do developing and start to enjoy the garden more, more than anything else. Ultimately, the proofs in the pudding, I've been using this now for a good couple of weeks. Five minutes is enough for each bed. Get some nice and soaked, even coverage of water, you know, and, and it doesn't, and it, and it gets around the sort of tall plants and things like that because you can put in as many nozzles as you like. There it is, just turned off. So, you know, for me, for my money, much better than the big um, uh, sprinkler systems and much, much better than doing it yourself. But hey, if you want to do it, give it a go. Got any questions, you're not sure, drop a couple of uh, comments in the, in the comments box if you need to. And if you like the video, of course, then like and subscribe. But for now, ciao for now. All love,